that. Today we're going to be learning some really cool, fun things. So, the first things that you're going to need are, you're going to need at least two pieces of paper for your art project today. They can be any color as well. And then you're going to need something to color your art project today as well. And if you ask your parents for help, they can help you with the scissors. Can somebody hand me the scissors? Thank you! So make sure you always practice safety and ask a parent before you use a pair of scissors, okay? And you're going to need some glue sticks as well. Alright, so today what we're going to be learning is we're going to be learning about cubism in abstract art. Have you ever looked at a piece of painting or a piece of artwork and you're just asking yourself, what does that mean? What is that supposed to be? Is that supposed to be a bird? Is that a flower? Sometimes abstract art is really complicated, but we're going to talk about one of the first abstract artists um, who started a movement called Cubism. Does anybody know what his name was? No. Okay. His name was Pablo Picasso. Oh, I know that now. Yeah. You probably have heard his name before, but he's the father of Cubism, and we're going to deconstruct some of our artwork and make it abstract artwork, okay? All right, let's get our supplies, and let's learn a little bit about Pablo Picasso while you're doing that. Pablo Picasso was born in 1881 in Spain. His full name is 23 words. It is Pablo Diego Jose Francisco de Paula Juan Nipomucino Maria de las Rab Remedios Cipriano de la Santisima Trinidad Martier Patricio Clito Ruiz y Picasso. Whew, that was a long name. He was an artist before he could he could walk and talk. He had a wonderful father who was also an art teacher. When he was 15 years old, he painted this painting called The First Communion. He was 15, but he started a movement called Cubism. Cubism tries to take an object and look at it from different perspectives and break it down into geometrical shapes. Here you can see three musicians, and can you find the dog in the painting? They have also been broken down into different shapes. What do you see here on the table? It looks like a guitar. The purpose of Cubism is trying to look at an object in all different points of view. Here is a dancer. See how all her moves in her arm are shown? An artist who is practicing cubism would try to paint all those positions. Here you see a face in different positions. Again, cubism is looking at a person or an object and looking at it from all different angles, all different perspectives to get the right shape. Here you can see a lady with her face turned towards you, but also she's looking sideways at the same time. So whatever you choose to draw today, just make sure you're drawing it really, really big. I'm going to draw a fish. And I'm going to draw him really, really big on my piece of paper because we're going to cut him out a little bit later. I'm going to give him his eye. I'm going to give him some big lips because he's a kissy fish. And then I'm going to draw his fin, little swish swish lines, and he has scales. And make sure I make his face a little bit different, but he has lots of scales, so I'm going to make a bunch of little uh, scales on him. And then I'm going to give him a big top fin, swish swish, and some little tiny fins on the bottom. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to give him a really big tail. Again, you want to make your design very simple. Um, because we're going to cut it out and cut it apart. We're going to deconstruct our fish. So, after you're done drawing your object, go ahead and find your colors. And in cubism, in an abstract art, you want to make sure everything's really, really colorful. So don't be afraid to get kind of crazy with the colors. All right. Um, use you know lose, use lots and lots of colors so my my fish is going to be kind of like a rainbow fit so i'm just going to add some more colors lots of colors i like green 
And then one of the things I can do is also give him some texture, give him some polka dots. I'm gonna get my red, draw some lines on him. You can do swirly swirls, cross hatch, dominoes. You know, make your fish colorful. You know, we, we all live colorful lives and you know, abstract art is full of color. And so um, just like God makes us all unique and individual, we, we come in all different uh, shapes, sizes, and colors. And so I want my fish to kind of be a very colorful fish. He's unique and he's beautiful in God's eyes, just like your picture is going to be unique and beautiful in God's eyes, but also your parents' eyes when you show them your, your masterpiece. All right, now I'm going to kind of color his tail. I'm going to give him lots of purples. I love purple. Purple's my favorite color. And then color it pink because I also love the color pink. I'm a little bit of a girl, but whatever color you choose, it's going to be beautiful. And like I told you, I told you I love swirls. So I'm going to give them some swirls, some you know, rainbow marks, and then I'm going to color, uh, give him some hearts because he's a kissy fish. Color it yellow. And I'm almost done. I'm going to give, color his fins real quick. So, oh, missed one. I almost forgot to color it, so make sure you color everything in. I'm gonna give him some blue eyes. All right, did y'all finish your fish fish picture? All right, once your fish picture is, again, ask your parents before you use some scissors and let's uh, use some uh, and practice some safety. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to cut out our fish. pieces here so let's kind of put him back together so I'm gonna get my fish here I'm gonna add this part here I might or actually I might put him back like this that looks kind of cool doesn't it like that. Sound like a puzzle. Yeah. And we can put his fin here. Oh. 
pin right there. <laughs> How does that look? You don't like it? Okay, let's try again, okay? Let's, let's put our fish here. Let's give him, let's give him some hair, okay? <laughs> let's give him some hair, all right? <laughs> He's looking like he's he has some hair. And we'll give him back his body. He's on the side of like, ooh, look like pretty hair. Yeah. And let's see. We can probably put this back right there. Like a mohawk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we'll give him some different fins. How about that? Now how does he look? And we can put this, this part, this fin, right there. And then, now we have a, a, a new fish. So, I mean, it's whatever you have that you can take your little fishy and cut him apart and put him back together in a different form. And that's abstract. He may not look like a fish, but we know that we used the parts of a fish and we kind of gave him a different look. And that's that. Now just glue it all down when you're ready. So don't